Hi there. Interesting little foraging challenge today. And by little, I mean foraging something little. By interesting, I may be stretching the word interesting a little bit. So, this small confusing pile of chaos is kind of what I'm going to work with here. I want to make little things, like like a couple of tiny little tools. One of them I kind of want like like a pick, you know, something long with a little pick on the end for like for getting like gaskets out of stuff. Uh, for my toolbox, I want a couple little like long scrapers, but they have to be they have to be kind of small, but they also have to be kind of stiff. I also want a couple of scraping things for like other other projects. And I'm going to make them. It's really messy. I'm gonna make them out of these hacksaw blades for the scraper things, obviously. And these, which are kind of interesting, these are springs that I got out of a. Wait. Sorry for throwing you away, tin snips. I threw you away too soon. Okay, now you're going away. These are springs out of a box spring that I had. I had an old box spring, and before I was gonna pitch it, I decided, hey, let's let's cut it open and see if there's anything interesting inside because obviously I would do that before throwing away something. And uh, I got a whole ton of these, like a whole bunch of these bundles worth, one one full mattress worth of these springs. They're kind of thick, which is pretty sweet. Most importantly, being springs, just in case you weren't convinced that this was a spring, uh, it's made out of spring steel, which is pretty good stuff. It's it's. A little bit tougher than what you might find in like just like a mild steel rod, you know. Springs have to springs have to be able to deform, right, and bounce back. So say you got some 600 pound guy laying down on this thing, he has to get up, and the spring like has to not collapse and stay collapsed. That's something that like copper is not going to do. As soon as you bend copper, it stays bent. And mild steel, to some extent, does that as well. But spring steel is special. At least, I think it is. This particular spring is extremely special in that it's free and I have a lot of them. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to start with these, though, for the little scraping tools. I generally use these for pottery, but you can also, like, make scraper things out of them. And these are uh, hacksaw blades. They were, they were bigger, kind of long. Uh, I didn't, didn't really need them that big, so I cut them down smaller. And here's something interesting that uh, you might not expect from these blades. See? Hacksaw blade, right? All's good. Gonna try bending it a little. It just shatters. These were discount like one dollar hacksaw blades. And by a dollar I mean multiple of them for a dollar. So you might be wondering if they're so brittle how am I gonna shape them? Well I kinda gave it away when I said forging whatever. Gonna heat it up. Heat it up with fire. Uh, now I have a forge, I have a forge burner, I have this sweet aluminum bronze forging hammer, and I have a railroad track anvil. I'm all set up for forging. But that's kind of overkill for this and for this little wire. So uh, I, I kind of thought maybe I'll use trusty plumber's torch. You know, that can, that can get stuff red hot. We'll see if that works. And then I thought, hey, why even bother with the gigantic golden hammer of awesomeness? Why don't I try to forge these simple tools using as simple a tools as I can, right? Simple tool for simple tool. No, no jokes. No jokes about me being a simpleton or a tool. So why not just try, you know, framing hammer? I got some anvil looking stuff on my on my vise and a plumber's torch and see if you can forge some simple crap out of this free crap. Here's my vice, standard shop vice. I found this in the garage when I moved in. It's got kind of a flat surface, kind of a crummy looking horn. It's got this edge right here, you know, a sharp edge. And in the clamp, I've clamped this round thing. It's a part out of a washing machine. And it's, it gives me a round a radius. So if I have to like, you know, knock around a radius or, or whatever, just flat, angle, sort of a horn, sort of round. This is kind of a radius too. And I'm just going to bash on random things until the whatever I'm bashing on turns into a part. If this doesn't work, I will just switch to big hammer and bigger fire and bigger forge. So we'll, we'll play this one by ear. I want this to have a simple 90 degree bend, relatively sharp. I've made a few tools out of these, I didn't film it, but 
I don't have any where I bent it sharply. So I'm going to try hammering it over this sharp edge. Try to give me as sharp of an edge as possible. Now I showed you before, when I go to bend this, it just snaps because this crappy Chinesium steel is so brittle. We're going to apply a little heat and give it a shot. First thing we're going to do, obviously, is burn off the paint, which is probably full of lead, and I'm sorry. You should wear a respirator. Don't do this at home, kids. Okay. Glowing brightly. Eh, 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 eh. Ah, it's cooled off. Really thin metal. Heats up pretty quick. Cools off really quick, though, too. That's kind of a sharp edge. I'd like it sharper. You know, come to think of it, I should have just clamped it in the vise and just hammered it over. That would have been so much easier. Oh well. Eh. Yeah? No, too much. Too far. Here we go. Why didn't I just grab the tongs in the first place? Cool. Now I have a, a, a saw edge. Which I don't really want to use, and kind of a flat edge. Neato. Now I got a sharp edge, and I'll just uh, get a get a nice scraping edge using a Dremel, probably. For this one, I want a slightly more complicated shape. I want a tight curve, then kind of a more open curve, then a little tighter curve, and it's probably easier just to explain it uh, by showing you. So, let her rip. Some of that crap paint ash. Eh. And part. <coughs> Problem arises. This is not sharp enough radius. Maybe I'll try the horn. Yeah, that kind of. Nah. No, that's not good. Whoops, just dropped a torch on a bottle of acetone. No problem. There. Tongs! Seen plenty of blacksmiths use stuff like this. Why didn't I just start with that, idiot? There. See what I mean? Sharp curve, very gentle curve, moderate curve. This is a copy of a pottery trimming tool I've seen before. I actually got this idea, the turning hacksaw blades into tools idea, from Justin's Makery. Remember I've mentioned him before? Go, he's got a channel now. Check, check him out. He's doing all sorts of cool stuff like this. I'm sure you can realize by now you can make just tons of profiles with those uh, things in a simple, simple little blowtorch, which is pretty sweet. Uh, but this is going to be a little more challenging. So this is a spring, and it's all coiled up because it's a spring, I already said that part, but because it's spring steel, I can't just straighten it. Also, I have no muscles, but I'm going to have to straighten it using heat. This is a bit thicker, so it's going to take a little longer to heat up, uh, but I think my, my strategy here is going to be straightening a section, then making a tool out of it, then maybe cutting it off. Maybe I'll try cutting it, like, cutting it forge style, like heat it up and just break. I, I don't know. I don't know. Gotta straighten it first. That seems to work. I'm just applying constant pressure and heating it with heating where I want to straighten it with this. When it starts turning red, it starts straightening. It's like magic. Yeah, that's probably a long enough section. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Now for making the end. I want this to be like a hook, a little hook thing, so I can like maybe poke it underneath the gasket, turn it to get the hook under there, and then pull to like pull the thing out. This little tool would be super handy. Something with a little hook on the end, which I don't have in the toolbox right now. Uh, but I want to. What I want to do is pound a flat end, then then pound like a little hook in the flat end. You know, doesn't have to be sharp. Uh, just having that little little thing in the toolbox will help immensely. 
especially like just getting underneath something to pull out. And it doesn't matter if it is sharp and it kind of pokes a hole in a gasket or whatever, because pretty much always if we're pulling something like that out, we are replacing it because it's screwed up anyway. So uh, yeah, I guess guess time to heat up the tip and pound away. Maybe preheat my anvil. Yeah, that looks pretty toasty warm. Hammer. Cool. It worked. It flattened it a bit. Oh. Move down here, because as I'm flattening it, I also kind of want to start the curve going. See what I'm getting at? Flattening it and thinning it. And I'm also kind of curving it around. Going to make a pretty sharp bend in the end, though. Maybe I'll do the bend right here. So you can kind of... No, that's not going to work. Now as I waste time trying to pick up my tools, the metal cools down. There we go. See? See, that's what I'm going for. It's kind of flat. You know, it's pretty thin profile from the side, but it's got a decent hook on the end. It's also kind of wide this way, so it'll hopefully be a little bit stronger, and it's made out of decent steel. Those little pick things that you can buy at, like, Harbor Freight or whatever, the picks just straighten right out. I think they're just mild steel. Before you're wondering, yes, I have a little cup of water to quench it. From what I've heard, and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, I know you will, uh, if you heat up metal really, really hot and then quench it quickly, it uh, does, it hardens it, but makes it, makes it harder, but a little more brittle. And I'm kind of okay with that. I don't care if it's a little more brittle. What I care more about is that this thing doesn't straighten out as soon as I put some load on it. Maybe I'll test it. It's still a hook. I think that's, I think that's good enough. You know, maybe that's not the right blacksmith way to do it, but just remember, I'm not a blacksmith. And maybe, you folks at home, you don't have an angle grinder. Maybe. Because I didn't have an angle grinder for a surprisingly long time. There, got my little hook, gasket pulling hook. And it's short, and it'll just fit right in the toolbox. And it's small and dark, which means I will lose it immediately. Perfect. Okay, now on to tool number four. Got to straighten out another section. Hmm. I'm about out of this gas. For once, I was prepared. Turning over a new leaf, making sure I have enough gas before the hardware store closes. Now this time it's going to look like I'm kind of doing the same thing, but I'm going to draw out a much longer flat section, and I'm also going to put a bend in it, because I want it to be like a side scraping tool thing, not a pick pulling tool thing. There are probably names for these. I'm not going to look them up. I'm sorry. go. Longer flat edge. Now we just got to put the curve in it. Boom. Boom. Gentle curve. Now some sort of quench. Sizzly. Boom. Now let's check this one for strength. Oh, not that strong. There we go. So, what do you do when you make a, a tool or a part, test it, and it fails? 
Huh? Well, you can make it make it differently, re-engineer it, do something different in your process to make the tool better, or you can make another one pretty much exactly the same way, and then you don't test it, so that way it won't fail. Eh? That's the way the pros do it. As far as you know, this tool is perfect, and I'm not going to show you otherwise. All you QA people out there, I just saved you a bunch of time. You're welcome. And the next part's pretty obvious. Sharpen with a Dremel, I suppose. Sharpen any edge you want to be scraping with or whatever. You can put the bevel on the back side or the front side or uh, however you want. I'm just going to kind of sharpen it. Yeah. And second thought, that's barely doing anything. This must be pretty tough and this thing here must suck. Bet it can sharpen this though, maybe, I hope. Oh yeah, that actually worked. Cool. Alright then. I wonder if I can grind off the saw teeth. That's not important. Cool. Put a little bevel just to make it a little bit sharper. For scraping stuff. Maybe shaving. That's very toasty warm. It also doesn't shave worth a crap. Hmm. Mission accomplished? <laughs>